I thought it would be great to learn a little bit more about what you mean when you talk about confirmation signal and if you could go over what you've seen since we were speaking last time. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the confirmation signal is something that I've, I've discovered is a very helpful tool when figuring out if something is a fake breakdown or a real breakdown or a fake breakout or a real breakdown breakout. And the, the key is this, is that institutional money flow um, and algorithms are set up to try to push investors to the limits um, and get them to exit their positions or enter short positions or long positions and get them on the wrong side of the market. And they do this because that's how they make their money. So if you look at the Goldman Sachs trading desk or any of these other trading desks at hedge funds, their goal is to push people to a level where they think something is happening. They jump on that side and then they'll, the institutions will reverse that trade and make them wrong. Ultimately, they'll exit the trade for a loss. So when you look at a major trend line, and you see a close below, you have to understand that could be a fake out. Now, what I found is that if you get a secondary close below that, that breakdown level, all right, that's where it's unlikely at that point to be a fake out, right? So institutions aren't going to let something dangle below a major trend line of support for long periods because it opens them up to vulnerabilities for bigger losses. So what they'll do is they'll pierce a level. We saw this on Bitcoin a while back where they pierced 30,000, then they ripped it up. Then uh, about a week ago or less than a week ago, they closed Bitcoin below 30,000 to fool people even more. So people got fooled on that initial pierce and it bounced. Then they closed Bitcoin below. They fooled people again and have pushed Bitcoin up. So on Bitcoin, for instance, or the S&P, you want to find a major trend line and look for two consecutive closes below that level, which will then lower the probabilities that it's a fake out by the institution. Really interesting. And let's move you over to Bitcoin as well. I remember that you were near term bearish on Bitcoin, long term bullish. Has your outlook changed very much since we last spoke? What are what have we seen in the market? Yeah, so let's take a look at the Bitcoin chart here. So, so people got so bullish a couple of days ago when you had this major pop up. News had kind of leaked out, or supposed news had leaked out that Amazon was going to start potentially accepting Bitcoin payments. Uh, you got to chuckle at this because it, it basically, as of the last 24 hours, Amazon denied it, and then no one can find any proof that that any of this actually existed. Um, there were talk, there was talks that, that Amazon was looking to hire people that had you know knowledge of crypto, and there, there's no you know, no one can find any posts from Amazon saying, oh, yeah, you know, let's hire these people. So so that's kind of interesting. But prices actually held the bounce decently well. Uh, here you can see very clearly when we talk about confirmation here, you see on Bitcoin, it hit the line here it pierced, which fooled a lot of people. A lot of people stopped out. A lot of people went short there and they ripped it up here. They closed it below. Notice no secondary day closed below and they ripped it up. And you basically have found your way back to this upper range. So I know a lot of people got bullish on Bitcoin recently in the last day or so, but just be aware that it's just trading in this range now where you've just gone to the upper end of that range. Now, if you can break above this 40 to 41,000 level, you could actually get one more move up to about 50,000. But without breaking above it, you can't really say, oh, the chart is bullish now, right? In all fairness, it's neither hugely bearish or bullish. It's just trading in this channel of these two parallel lines. Really interesting. And thanks for the concrete example there. Good to look at. Maybe we can dig a little bit deeper into this Amazon and Bitcoin news. Ultimately, it seems like maybe it was smoke and no fire. But if something like that were to happen, how significant would that be for Bitcoin? Are people right to be excited about this mainstream acceptance that we're starting to see? Yeah, so so number one, you shouldn't be surprised that just after it was clo it closed below 30,000, somehow this you know rumor slash news comes out, right? So, <laughs> so I mean, it just kind of fits with the whole metrics of making sure you see confirmation before you really trust something. Uh, in this case, Bitcoin's breakdown. Um, and also it makes you think that, okay, well, the institutions that bought that Pierce and stop. People were stopping out of Bitcoin. It closed below thirty thousand. They were exiting. Well, who was buying? Well, probably institutions. And then they needed that extra juice to sell into the average investor. So they pumped it with some sort of fake news here and got it up there. And, and my guess is they were selling right around forty thousand, which was right at the high end of that channel. Now, if that news did turn out to be true, or at some point in the future, if Bitcoin is adopted by Amazon for payments it would be big news. I mean, Amazon is the biggest retailer in the world. 
um, it would be significant. Uh, it would show further adoption. And I do think that would be a game changer to see a company like, like Bitcoin adopted, just like if Apple did, you know, uh, we've seen Tesla accept payments for Tesla cars, but then they walked that back and they stopped doing it. So you've got to start this wave of corporate adoption again, which is, in my opinion, once you see a flush out on Bitcoin down the line because of deleveraging event, you'll then see it consolidate and begin an upward trend and more corporations will start to adopt it at that point.